Hi everyone, my name is Karen. This is my channel Rather Be Reading and today I'm bringing to you a recent reads video. <music> week since I last checked in for a recent reads video. It has been a slower reading week, I am not going to lie. Things definitely slowed down but we'll talk about that a little bit more as we go through the books that I read. I did complete three books, like I said a slower week for me but let's jump straight in and talk about the three books that I did complete this week. So the first book that I read was Hopeless by Colleen Hoover. So first off I want to mention the trigger warnings in this for um child abuse, um, sexual abuse, and um, suicide. There is some particularly harmful dialogue around suicide, I think, in this. It does kind of get addressed later on in the book, but it's not challenged at the time that the harmful language is in there. Um, and there's like a whole passage of it, and it's I just thought it was quite harmful um, to be aware of those things. Um, so this is contemporary. I will also say that I had been saying that this was YA. This is not YA. This is, I guess, new adult. Um, the characters are in high school, but I believe the male character is 18 and the female character turns 18 in the book. And the themes of this are definitely for an older audience um, in several kind of different ways. So it's definitely more new adult than young adult. So this is basically just a romance. I don't really know how else to, I can't tell you anything else about kind of the plot, what there is of a plot without spoiling um, the story. Um, but I will say that I didn't like this. So, so far my relationship with Colleen Hoover has not been great. I've only read her slammed books so far but I wasn't a huge fan of those and I really didn't like this. I, so the main couple meet and then kind of enter into this relationship and the main male character is just a straight up asshole in some ways and it's all like for reasons but those reasons don't come out until later which like that might be okay except the female character is just really forgiving of all of these qualities that he has at the beginning um, that I just don't think... <laughs> most people would be as forgiving of some of these things like they go out on one date um and then there is an incident that happens and she's really mad at him and basically they don't speak for like a week or something like that and they've been on one date keep in mind one date and then he climbs through her bedroom window while she's sleeping and that's just like an okay thing that happens and I was just like if a guy crawled through my bedroom window after we hadn't spoken for like a week and I was really mad at him and we'd been on one date I would just be like you are a fucking creepy stalker like what is wrong with you there's just a lot of stuff like that that I was just like why are we just pretending like these things are okay because they're not okay so there's a lot of normalizing of really like unhealthy behaviors then um a lot of the other problems that I have with this I can't talk about without spoiling the book but this book does deal with a lot of really dark subject matter in the second half of the book. I will also say I read a couple of reviews that were talking about how this is like twist after twist after twist and I was like none of these were twists I don't, and I don't think they were written necessarily as to be twists. It was very obvious to me where the plot was heading um, but I will say that those darker subject matters I personally um, I can't speak about it from an own voice's perspective, but I don't think that they were well handled. I really, really don't. Um, I really don't think it was well handled. Um, and in the end, I gave this two stars. I'm a bit nervous about moving forward because I have the sequel to this, which I have now checked and is in fact this book retold from the male's perspective. But I own it and it's on my TBR shelf, so I don't know whether to just completely skip it and just take it off my TBR or more likely I'll probably give it a go. And if I read like 50 pages and I'm really not getting along with it, um, I may DNF it. I don't know. We'll see. I'll talk about that probably next week. But this was a two star read for me. I then completed the audiobook for um, The Chestnut Man by um, Soren Svistrup, who is a Danish 
author and this is a book that's been translated from um Danish it's set in Denmark um and this book is a crime thriller like it's um more police on the more police procedural side it's pretty dark we're following basically a um there's a serial killer who leaves these chestnut man like chestnut dolls sorry he's called the chestnut man he leaves these chestnut dolls um which are dolls made out of chestnuts with like twigs or matches or whatever for arms and legs in them and he leaves one of those near his victims um the cases get and there's like a serial killer like several different murders that have happened the case then gets um more complicated when one of the chestnut dolls is found to have the fingerprint of a young girl who went missing about a year prior um however she was the daughter of a prominent politician however she someone like confessed and was subsequently convicted of her murder despite the fact that her body was never found but like I said her fingerprint has now turned up on one of these chestnut dolls at these current crime scenes so that kind of adds like some other elements into the mystery be warned the crimes in this are pretty like gruesome um there is torture um he cuts off like hands and feet and stuff like that so it is pretty dark I did think that the mystery itself was pretty well crafted um I didn't see the ending coming it wasn't like a huge twist but I didn't really see it coming but I will say that I was listening to this really sporadically while I was working on a pretty in-depth project at work so I will say that I'm normally pretty good at picking up on the whodunit of mystery so it may be that if I had been giving this book my full of attention maybe I would have picked up on it I don't know but in this case I didn't um I thought like I said I thought it was pretty well it is a longer um police procedure as well it's like more like 500 pages there are quite a lot of different perspectives in there as well but um in the end I thought it was a pretty well done um like crime thriller and in the end I gave that 3.75 stars and then the final book that I read was Puddin by Julie Murphy. This is the sequel to Dumplin'. Um, and this um, follows actually two characters. So I only knew that we were following um, um, Millie, who was a character in the first book, who, um, well, the they were both characters in the first book. One was a little bit more prominent the, um, than the other. So we're following Millie, who was a contestant. Well, they were both contestants in the pageant. Um, I will say this cover led me to believe that maybe we were headed down a female female romance uh plot line just be warned that is not what this book is it's just a friendship novel which is fine but I just thought from this I was like oh we're gonna get to a romance and then that's like not where we headed um so this really is just about friendship for the most part it is um, Millie and Callie that's the other character are very very different characters and Millie is um, she's a fat girl who is incredibly sweet and nice, a hugely like positive thinker, always looks on the bright side of everything. She's into crafting and wearing like bright, happy clothes, all of that type of thing. We then have Callie who is, um, in the more kind of popular crowd, um, you know, is beautiful, thin, although she's described as being curvy, um, she is um, part Mexican um, and she is much more of a negative thinker, very much pessimist. She's got a lot of like in like inward anger um, and she has is kind of a mean girl. She has been historically like mean to people sometimes um, and Basically, at the start of the novel, the two characters get forced together. Callie does something and then it ends up having to work off damages that she's done um, at the same workplace where Millie works. And so they work together and a friendship forms. I really enjoyed all of the friendship themes. Um, I enjoyed how different the two characters were. I enjoyed um, all of the like fat rep and because like there was a lot of that in the first book, but there's a lot of it in this book as well um and I really love all I just love all of that discussion it is own voices um I believe Julie Murphy um is a fat author um and I thought I just it's incredibly well done if you've ever been overweight like you've had the thoughts and feelings and like 
and whether you're at a place where you are confident with your body or not confident with your body, there's a lot of stuff in here that like to be taken away from it that I really, really liked. Um, I will say I wish that some of the character, um, like the issues with um, Callie's um, personality would have been more fully um, addressed. Um, and I will say I wasn't probably as invested in the overall like story of this as I was with Dumplin, but it was still a really enjoyable YA contemporary and I gave this 3.5 stars. So that's it. Those are the three books that I read to touch on what I'm currently reading. So I did start, I forgot to, to bring my book in with me, but I am currently reading The Proper Care and Maintenance of Friendship by Lisa Verge Higgins. This is a women's fiction. Um, I'm not going to get too much into it. I'll talk about it next week because I've only read a couple of chapters of that so far, but I have started that. And then I have also started a new audiobook. I am listening to the audiobook of um, The Golden Fool by Robin Hobb, which is the second book in the Tawny Man trilogy. Um, I'm about just over a third of the way through that. That is a longer audiobook. It's like 27 hours. And as I've mentioned, I was, so this is one of the reasons why I didn't get as much read this week. I have, I was working on a really um, big project at work this week and it was taking a lot of um, mental power and it was really like a big time crunch situation so I wasn't able to focus on audiobooks as much and then as soon as that project was finished I had kind of half a day of not being too crazy busy and then I got given this other task that was like a real real mind situation I really had to use my brain a lot so I didn't get anywhere near as much audiobook listening done this week but I am about a third of the way through that so I will be continuing on with that audiobook um, when I go back to work on Monday. Um, so that's it. Those are the books that I read, what I'm currently reading. Uh, this is a shorter recent reads video this week. I would love to chat with you guys in the comments down below. If you've read any of the books that I read, if you've got any thoughts on them, or if you want to chat about what you guys have been reading recently, I would love to know. Please like this video if you liked it. Please subscribe if you want to see more from my channel. That is all I have for this video today. Bye guys. Yeah.